we're going to take a look at Zapier tables and how we can use it in conjunction with our Zaps to be able to build more powerful business logic. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help businesses like yours integrate your business applications and automate your processes. For our use case, we're going to talk about a sales organization who has some sort of form on their website. People contact them via that form, and they want to make sure that those leads that come into the system get assigned to the correct sales rep. In this use case, I'm going to be using Google Forms, but it really doesn't matter where we start from. This could be some custom forms you have on your website. You could be using Zapier's interfaces. However you get that data, the important part here is that we've got people who are inputting their information with email address, and then they're choosing what state that they are from. Because in this use case, we want to identify the sales rep by their correct region. Then we'll build some business logic together. And ultimately, the output of this is that the sales rep is getting pinged on Slack with the information. We've determined the right rep to give it to, and we send their lead information via a bot on Slack. Before we dig into the zap, let's talk about the different steps and break them down of what occurs when in our business logic. So first, we have that form submission that comes across, and we know that that has the state information for that individual lead. However, our sales reps aren't assigned at the state level. They're assigned at the region level. Think Midwest, Northeast, South, and West. And we have a separate table with that information. So Minnesota, in this case, would correspond to the Midwest. Next, we have sales reps assigned for that region. So if that lead is from Minnesota, and we've now tagged that to the Midwest, we want to find what sales reps we have that are in the Midwest. Then if we have multiple sales reps that are returned, we want to find the sales rep that has the fewest amount of leads. They have the lowest lead count and identify that sales rep as the person we want to assign this lead to. Once we've identified that rep, we'll ping them over Slack like you just saw. And then finally, we want to increment the lead count for that sales rep so that when we run this process again with a new lead, We've got whoever has the fewest leads this next time around. So let's dig into Zapier tables. I've created a table here. And the first question that comes up is, Dan, can Zapier tables be a replacement for something else that I'm using? You know, on our channel, we talk a lot about Airtable and SmartSuite and other no-code applications. Is Zapier tables at the place where it could replace those additional applications? And I'd say, no, not yet. I could see in the next couple of years that this could be a solid competitor especially when you're combining it with Zapier interfaces, which we'll cover more in another video. But at this point, I would look at Zapier tables to be a storage hub on the back end with information that makes it easier. Oftentimes when we're building Zaps, we've got lots of extra information thrown into Google Sheets. And this can be a centralized location where we've got information where we can kick off automations rather than looking at it like it's our primary source of information like we would Airtable. Now I've built out this table by importing it from a CSV, but you can also connect to Google Sheets or Airtable to be able to pull in your data. We've got our different fields. So we're looking at those sales reps. We've got first name, last name, email address. You'll notice that we've got different icons for the types of fields that we have. We've got our region, we've got that lead count that we were talking about, and then our Slack user ID. Now we can add additional fields that we need, and this feels a little bit like it would many of our other no-code applications. We can actually choose an icon for it. We can choose our field type, and we've got a number of different fields to choose from. One of the things you'll notice right off the bat that seems a little bit missing here is that of a linked record, a linked relationship between the different tables that we have here. And at this point, we don't have a true relational database on our end linking up the tables. But one thing you can do is you can have a drop down here. And with the drop down, instead of choosing static values, you could choose from another table. And so we could say, let's call this states, and we could choose from those sales regions. And then once we have that information and we're pulling and displaying the state, we create that field and we view it over here we'd see a drop down list and we have all of our states available that are coming from the other table. But this is limited. It's limited to 100 records. It's not creating that true linked relationship. So I would look at this more as referenced validated data, kind of like if we were using Google Sheets and we were looking up information from another table in our drop down. The other type of field I think you'll find really helpful is a button. And we can use this button to actually trigger a zap here. So we could say, hey, for this sales rep record, we want to start their onboarding process. And then we can actually create that new zap, which is going to be triggered from a button so we can kick off that process at any time. Now, additionally, we can create different views of our data. And a view in this case is about locking down what fields we want visible to someone that we share this and give access to. 
And it's about filtering our records. What records can they see that we give them access to? So that's what we can do in a view and add different conditional filters here and hide the fields that we want. And then we can share this out to other people on our team. But this is about it right now. In another video, we'll talk about Zapier interfaces and how we can do things like Kanbans with an interface. But this is not like Airtable where you have lots of different view types. You can't create a Gantt chart out of this and create a timeline out of it. So it's a little bit more limited to just the visibility around data at this point. Now let's check out our other table here for a moment as we get back into our use case. So we've got our sales regions table. Again, I just imported this and we have a list of states as you can see on the left-hand side. We've got a state code. And then the most important thing we have right here is the region because this is where we're going to say, hey, given the state information that we had from our form, what's the appropriate region to find the sales rep from? One of the things I like about Zapier tables is you can click and see what zaps are actually connected to those tables. So it makes it more helpful as you're creating lots of zaps and lots of tables to better organize your information. Now let's talk about building out our zap. So for our trigger, we just have when there's a new form response in Google Forms, so again, that's connected to our form we've authenticated. And what we're going to do next is to find that sales region that corresponds with the state information that came in. So in our action here, we're saying our action is to find or create record. And this can be a little bit confusing because we don't actually want to create a record in the step. And you don't have to. That's an optional part of this action is to actually create the record if it doesn't exist. In this case, we're just worried about the find. So what we're doing is we're saying, what's the table ID? In this case, we're choosing our sales regions because that has the information about the state. And for our filter, we're saying, hey, let's look at the state information. So we're gonna find that state when it exactly matches the state that came in from our Google form. And then here's where we've got that checkbox and we're saying, hey, we don't need to worry about creating a new Zapier table record if it doesn't exist. When we test our step, it comes back with the correct state. It found that state of Minnesota and it identifies that it's got the Midwest, which comes back as one of those fields that's returned. Then in our next step, we're going to find records. These are the sales rep records that match a certain set of conditions. So here we're using a different step, a different type of action. And this is that output as line items. And in here, if we click on our action, we're now looking at our sales reps table. And here we're saying if the region of the sales rep exactly matches, and then we're plugging into this previous step on that find or create step, now we can see the state that returned was Minnesota. And from here, we know that the region is the Midwest. So we're using that region Midwest to say, find the sales reps who are now tied to that region that we found in the previous step. Then when we test this step, we can see there are indeed multiple different sales reps. They're all tied to the Midwest. And now we determine who is the right sales rep record that we need to use based on their lead count. Now this next step is going to use a little bit of code. This is an action called code by Zapier. And I don't want you to be worried here because we can actually use AI to generate the code for us, even if you know nothing about coding yourself. So in the action, the important part that I'm doing is I'm feeding in the data that we need in order to process this step. So the data that we need, I called one field here, lead count. And this is where I'm pulling again from the previous step that it just came back from. So it's creating these lists for us. It's got the first names of those different sales reps. It has the last names of those different sales reps, the email address, the region. Now this one here is the lead count. And this corresponds to how many different leads do those sales reps currently have. And this is important because it's going to help us identify the correct sales rep based on having the fewest amount of leads. The next input we're giving it is this Slack user ID. And that's because once we find that right individual, we want to ping them and we have to know what their user ID is on Slack. And then finally, we're pulling the record ID of the record in the actual Zapier table. So this isn't something that I had in my Google spreadsheet or my CSV when I imported it. Instead, it's pulling it from the actual data, the actual record IDs inside of the table, and it's just gonna call it record ID. Now, the reason we're doing that is because at the very end, we need to increment the value for that sales rep. So if there's a sales rep that had one lead and we assign them a lead, we now need to make that one into a two. And in order to do that, we need to know the identifier for that record. 
So once we have those input fields here, what we can do is we can generate our code here with AI. And then I'm just gonna type in some text here to say, find the user with the lowest lead count. And then the output that we want to retrieve from it is their Slack user ID and their record ID. So let's test this out by pressing generate code. And the code might look great, but we wanna make sure that it actually functions. So it's important that you click on the output data here and we're going to click on run code. And you can see this gives us exactly what we want. We've got our Slack user ID and it comes back with only one ID. It's not a list of IDs and it's coming back with our record ID from the actual Zapier table itself. Now we can click to use that code and we can scroll down, continue, and we can test this now at the action level just to make sure that everything is working here. Now in our Slack action, the most important thing is that we make sure we map that username correctly. So if we didn't do it dynamically, we'd just be manually choosing the user, but we did it dynamically. We're finding that rep and we found their ID. So we'll click on that run Python in code step and this is where we'll use that individual's Slack user ID. Now, how you want the Slack notification to look is up to you. You could put images in there and some nice emoji. We're just sending the information from that Google form step with the person's name, email address, and how we can help them. And then the last thing we need to do is to tell Zapier to increment that lead count from the sales rep we sent the message to. So in Zapier tables, there's an actual event you can see there's a number of them. We've got create record, delete record, duplicate a table. In this case, we're incrementing a value. And then in the action, what we're doing is we need to tell it that record ID. So we'll come back down to that run code step and we're using the record ID that we found and that's what's gonna plug into it. And then here we're choosing the appropriate field, which is our lead count. It's a number field, so it knows which is the correct one and we can choose it what to increment by. So you might have some different situation where you need to say, hey, increment a field by $5 and you could put that in. But in our case, we just wanna say there's one more lead, so increment that by one. Then we're good to go. You can publish this, turn it on, then all of the new leads that come in from your website goes through that assignment process to identify the correct person, sends them a notification on Slack, and then increments it so the next rep can get their lead as it comes in. I hope that was helpful for you to see how we can use Zapier tables with our Zaps to build more business logic in our back end. If you have any questions about getting set up with your no-code applications or integrating your business systems, don't hesitate to reach out to automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.